Foco Fondo is a gravel race and party in Fort Collins, Colorado. I did the 100 mile race and I came third behind Alex Hone, a UCI pro on the Italian team, Drone Hopper and gravel pro Jake McGee. I raced the Envy Custom Road with Cadex 32 mil classics tires. I wanna tell you about the bike. I wanna tell you about the gear I used, what worked well, what didn't work so well, and of course about the wonderful context that is Foco Fondo. Foco Fondo, as the name implies, is a big, fun cycling festival. Organizers Whitney and Zach Allison very intentionally make the event accessible to a wide range of folks. There's a bunch of different distances uh, from about 20 miles all the way up to uh, the 145 mile big boy. Yes, you can race it, but most of the people there are wanting to just experience a good time and complete the distance. And Zach and Whitney cater to that crowd quite a bit. For instance, there's things like a bingo card of sorts, the gambler's preem, where the object is to check off as many boxes as you can, such as citing a man named Brian Worthy. You see Brian, you check off that box. There was a skid contest. There were pinatas at uh, one of the aid stations. The idea is to have a good time on the bike. If you wanna go fast, have at it. If you wanna just enjoy the day, you can do that too. I live in Boulder, Colorado, and I rode up to Fort Collins the day before. It was nice to have a road bike to ride there instead of a heavier gravel bike with heavier gravel tires. I played around with the Insta360 Go 2 camera. Uh, I like the lightweight of the thing, and I've been comparing that to a GoPro. Ultimately, the, there's a lot of vibration in the Insta360, and the battery life is nowhere near what a GoPro uh, does and can do. So I went with the GoPro for, for race day, but enjoyed having the Insta on my helmet and, and clipped to the, the handlebars on the extension uh, just to play around and get some footage on the way up. On the way up, I did get caught in a rainstorm, which was a uh, inadvertent test of the wax I had on my chain. I've been using Allied's Grax wax. I like this because you can apply it like a normal lube. You don't have to you know, dip it in a vat the way uh, the more serious you know, pro racers will do with their wax chains, but you still get many of the same benefits of you know, low resistance. Uh, I was pleased that after getting rained on for 90 minutes, the wax was still good to go for the next day. I didn't need to reapply. Rolling into Fort Collins, I checked off the first box on my Gambler Supreme, bumping into Brian Worthy there downtown. Then I went over to New Belgium brewery which is the the host of the event this you know start finish and party was all held on the grounds of the big brewery you may know from fat tire beer and others i was happy to take a tour of new belgium with the master brewer nick siniceros who showed me both sides of the brewery there's the larger part where the fresh beer is brewed the the ales the lagers and then he also showed me the uh, area where the footers are where the sours are cultivated. I'm a big fan of sour, so that was a treat to see how those come together and be able to taste some of those. Nick was on his feet all day on Saturday showing people like myself around before he himself went out for the 145 mile event on Sunday. Race day dawned cool and overcast, which is always welcome for a long day. You know, heat can be a challenge in many of these events, so having a cool start was nice. I was also happy to have slept in a bit and not been up at O Dark 30 for the 145 miler where the favorites were Alexi Vermeulen who took the day and Hannah Schell who won the women's in the 145. Uh, both of those competitors are pros in the Lifetime Grand Prix series and they showed exactly why in the longer event. In the 100 mile event, I was happy to ride with many friends. One thing I love about gravel events is that there's no categories. So, you know, all genders, all ages, you can just pick which distance you want uh, and off you all go together. So I was riding with my friends, Jennifer and Benjamin Sharp, for instance, among many others. There's former road pros, Cesar Grajales and Neil Shirley, who used to be teammates on Jittery Joes back in the day. It was fun following the wheels of those two gentlemen. Rolling out of the start, we were under the careful watch of the party police. Yes, that's right. Focofondo has party police. Two riders were leading out the neutral section wearing Hawaiian shirts and armed to the teeth with large super soaker water guns, which they would use if there were any infractions. If people tried to violate the neutral section, you would be sprayed down. Once we got out of town, party police blew the whistle, dropped the flag, and the racing was on. 
As the race got started, a few guys went off the front. I joined a group of four and was happy to be out of the, the argy-bargy of the big group uh, and to settle into a tempo with those four. The bike was proving to be A-OK. -okay. I was a little concerned that a 32 tire on a road bike would be a bit too under bikey for a gravel race. I had talked to Whitney the week before. Hey, Whitney, what do you think about a 32? And she said, oh, yeah, you'll be fine. There's a couple sections where it'll be You'd wish you had more, but you'll be fine. And sure enough, she knew what she was talking about. I was, I was all right. There was one stretch where had it been rainy, I would have been hosed. It was a, a dirt two track uphill. Um, luckily it was dry and, and tacky, so there are no issues. But if it was muddy, that would have been uh, mud on my face for trying to run skinny 32s and using road <laughs> cleats there. That was a point where some attacks started coming from the back. The likes of uh, Alex and Cesar and some others, uh, Tane Andrade, another Albuquerque guy, uh, br bridged up to our front group. There was a bit of reshuffling. Alex attacked, Jake went with him. Uh, Tane was able to bridge up with me on his wheel and that was the quartet for the majority of the day. As the four of us rotated, in and out of the wind. I had a lot of time to look at the, the bikes and gear setup that the other three had and their hydration solutions also. For the most part, the 32s were just fine. On some of the choppier washboard sections, I wish I had a bigger tire. And on some of the looser corners, I uh, eased off a bit more than the other three did. But once we were on the pavement sections and the smoother dirt sections, the 32s felt great. They're nice and supple, uh, but still, still feel quite fast. So I was happy with the tires. The hydration solution I was not quite so happy with. Uh, a couple things were on me, a couple were on gear. So the Envy custom road bike, one of the things you can get with it is custom cages, which look fantastic. However, they are not the grippiest things. And I discovered uh, in a dirt race last year that it doesn't take much to eject the bottle. So I swapped those out uh, for some elite cages and those for the most part have served me well. Turns out uh, in the event, we we're maybe 10 miles in, I went to grab a bottle, bottle was gone. <laughs> so I was glad I had uh, not just the bottles I had in the cages, but one in my back pocket to drink from. Another forehead slapper on my part, I had brought my Camelback Chase vest. Uh, so in the case I was with a group that did not stop at one or more of the aid stations, I would have hydration there. I had the vest, I had the bladder, I had the hose, but I discovered the night before the race, I did not have the lid for the bladder. Turns out it's kind of hard to uh, use a camelback with, without the lid there. So the, the bottle in the back of the, the jersey, it was. The, the rest of the group was split, you know, 50-50 on using a vest or just stopping. Our quartet uh, called a truce at the 50 mile point uh, where there was an aid station. You know, Alex taking the lead was saying, hey, 90 seconds in and out, so we all zipped in, topped off bottles, grabbed some pickle juice shots, Cokes, uh, some Pop-Tarts, and we were back on our way. In the back half of the race, Tane was saying that uh, being sick and doing some mountain bike racing had left him a little fatigued. We didn't know whether he was bluffing or not. When he faded, we decided he was not bluffing. Coming into the big climb of the day, uh, both Jake and I knew what was coming. Alex was going to stick it to us on the climb and of course uh, stick it to us he did. Jake you know, tried to go with him and was able to hang for a little while. I did not change my cadence one single RPM when Alex went. I just you know, stayed at the, my top speed which was much slower than a UCI pros. Alex rode solo to the wind the way he had called it at the start. Uh, Jake was in pursuit behind and then I was chasing Jake for the next 30 or so miles at a few times yelling at him, you know, Jake, if you wait for me, we could work a lot faster together, but wait, Jake did not. Coming back into the finish, I made it back in under five hours, which was good enough for the Foco Bolo prize handed out by the man, Zach himself, for finishing in under five hours. I did not fall down in the mud right by the start finish the way I did on the way out <laughs> during the, the neutral section. And then as designed by the Allisons, we were able to hang out there on the grounds of New Belgium, drink beers and enjoy spending time with friends new and old. So takeaways from Foco Fondo 2022. Envy Custom Road Bike continues to be a wonderfully versatile machine. I had this made for me last year when Envy was getting into road bikes for the very first time and every bit is custom. The stem length 
the bar width are all customizable within five mil as is the head tube all the other geometry so you can get the same fit as you could on a standard bike but with, with just this beautifully clean design no spacers and the saddle is positioned you know precisely on the the center of the rails the geometry is road race the clearance is for up to 35 millimeter tires so i've used this in road races and dirt road races like the boulder roubaix which if that was created today would be called a gravel race but it's more of like a, a faux roubaix where most people were on road bikes this was excellent for that the 32 tires there were probably on the wider side of what most people were using and then i've also now used this in a gravel race you wouldn't want to use this in a really rowdy gravel race but for a dirt road race like focal fondo it was fantastic the tires also thumbs up for me i've been riding these you know off and on for maybe six months or so nary a flat tire knock on wood beautiful combination of suppleness speed and uh, durability i also like the fact that i put them on to pump them up and with no sealant they're perfectly airtight which to me is a sign of uh, high standards you know it's easy enough to get on with hands without using tools but holds airtight of course i put sealant in uh, for racing but good job kdex on those tires the cages look great don't work very well that's the bottom line there the chase camelback vest works great as long as the operator can remember to bring all the parts i have a checklist that i'll put together often the night before and i had a checklist for the for the chase vest i checked that off but now i need to add one more item to that list which is remember the, the lid you big dummy Gooder sunglasses. I have been recommending these to folks because of a few things. One, they look great. They are quite grippy on the nose piece and the ear pieces, and they're 45 bucks. In a world where Oakleys and others are well north of $200, $45 seems like a reasonable price for glasses. What's the catch, you say? Well, the durability is not great, I discovered. I uh, went to clean off the lenses mid-race after you know, some grit and grime had been spit up on the lenses, and not having a clean cloth, I just used my jersey. That scratched off the reflective coating on most of the lens and made the glass kind of foggy for the rest of the day. Got home, cleaned it off with water and soap and the reflective coating on that part is gone. It's still usable, it just doesn't look great. Uh, contacted Gooder and they said in the case of such damage, they will replace the lenses for you. So the price, great. The look, great. Uh, the performance, good or enough. So I've been, like I said, recommending these to a few folks when they see them, and I would just like to add that uh, addendum to it. Hey, be super careful with lenses because they scratch it easily, but if they do, Gooder will replace them. And of course, the Focal Fondo itself. Two thumbs up, Whitney and Zach. That was a great time. A lot of us in the bike world talk about community and expanding the reach to new groups. Often that's more hopeful talk than action. Uh, kudos to you, Whitney and Zach, for actually making it happen, uh, bringing the party to a wider group of people. Also, thanks to Nick Sinaceros for the great tour. If you're in Fort Collins, go see New Belgium, go see Nick. If you're not in Fort Collins, you can follow the guy on Instagram. He is beer underscore Nick. Focal Fondos kicks off again next year, next summer 2023. I hope to see you there. <laughs>